Could you kind of educate us into that area of infrared? Okay. So if we look at the full range of energies that come from sun, going from the left side, which is probably the most impactful to life on the planet, all life, to the most benign, you start with gamma rays, then x-rays, then you go into the UV light spectrum, then the natural light, which is the rainbow, what we see, our visible light spectrum. Then you go into the invisible light spectrums, which would be the infrared spectrum next, next and microwaves. And then after that, we have um, radio waves. So that's kind of the full gambit. Now, go, dialing in a little bit further on the infrared spectrum, our approach as a company is sort of a page out of, out of the playbook from nature. We All of our devices... Um, that we develop, they use the full spectrum approach, which is the three wavelengths, the near, mid, and far wavelengths of the infrared spectrum, which is different than red, by the way, mm -hmm. the red light. That comes before red, blue, green, and uh, purple, and so different different um, frequencies. And, and it's the best way I can equate it is sort of like dialing in a radio station, 107.5. These light frequencies have specific, really scientifically defined uh, wavelengths, and they are measured in what's called a nanometer. When you get up past a thousand nanometers, it's called a micron. And so the infrared spectrum is everything from around 600 nanometers all the way up to 20,000 nanometers or 20 microns. And a full spectrum approach, as we do with our devices, actually captures about 96% of that full range. We go from 600 to 14,000 nanometers or 14 microns. And in doing so, we cast sort of a big net because the body and in nature, the reason why nature, our deliverer, sun delivers all these frequencies is because basically everything, every life on every form of life, both in the plant and animal kingdom can benefit from every single one of those wavelengths. Now, um, in the Western approach or allopathic approach to medicine, we sort of compartmentalize things like near versus far and this specific red versus blue light and, and all that. And there's some merit academic discussion as to why there are different wavelengths and what these wavelengths do. And um, in our infrared sauna and healing pads and things we make, we use full spectrum because we want to cast a big net because in, in our bodies, the way we process these frequencies, it's sort of like vitamin C. You can take, you can not, well, you can overexpose yourself to vitamin C, take a lot of it, but whatever your body doesn't use, it sort of just expels. And it's the same thing with light frequencies. They absorb in our tissues, they absorb in our cells on an actual cell level. And when we get up completely absorbed, then we let those frequencies go. It's part of what's called homeostasis or creating somewhat of a balance in the body, both from an energy point of view, from a light frequency point of view, and from a heat, heat point of view, like a body temperature, core temperature point of view. And so... So you really can't get overexposed to infrared frequencies, but you can, your body will take everything it needs in terms of its deficiencies in order for the body to operate. And if you can really break down our body battery and our body energy to the smallest, smallest degree, we're really kind of light beings. Um, and so being energized by light and by sun every day is a very important component in order for us to maintain all of our systems health, not just one particular area.